Hi, how are you, you good girl? I'm here with Apple, Bootsy, and Tag, and hopefully they are going to help me talk to you about doggy doors. The very first decision you need to make about a doggy door is, do I need a doggy door? We find that it's necessary for us and the reason is that we have multiple dogs. If you have one dog, maybe even two, that dog or dogs could be trained to go over to the door and let you know in one way or another that they need to go out. However, every time the dog has to go out and every time the dog has to come back in, you've got to get up to do that for them. And they don't all decide to go at the same time. So, if you have multiple dogs, as we do, you will probably find it easier to allow them to let themselves out and back in again. To save you a little bit of, of that up and down. And that, of course, brings up another point. If you have a physical disability or if you're kind of like old like me and you don't really want to get up an awful lot, um, even with one dog, it might be easier for you to have a doggy door. Once you've decided that you need a doggy door, the next thing you need to decide is what type of doggy door, what type of installation are you going to use and where it's going to be located. I have if Apple would get out of the way, thank you, you're very sweet, I love you very much. I have mine installed through the wall. And I'll show you a little close-up view of this. The doggy door I have actually comes as a through-the-wall installation kit. It consists of two of these, Apple, please, thank you very much, two of these frames with the flaps. And the flaps, you'll notice, are easy to push out of the way. And then on the inside, let's get a closer view of that, you will see that actually this was made for a wall that was not quite as wide as the one I have. We made sure that there was a nice solid wood base and the two parts that are supposed to fit together to form the telescoping tunnel um, are actually separated, but it doesn't bother the dogs at all. And you'll see on the other side there is another flap. If you can't install the doggy door through the wall, or if you just don't feel like cutting a huge hole through your house outside wall, some people will install a doggy door in a storm door or screen door. Of course, that means that you'll have to open the door that's inside the storm door uh, before the dogs can go in and out. But this is a uh, rather simple and not too involved solution. And if you happen to have a sliding patio door, you can purchase a panel, as you see on the right side of this photo, that fits into the opening and the sliding door rolls right up against it the only limitation really is the size of the opening that your patio door affords you, but your dog can go in and out at any time. Where you choose to locate your doggy door is a very important decision. This is our kitchen right here, and uh, you know we have our uh, stove on one side, we have sink and counter space on the other, so all of our meal preparations are done here. And if you kind of look around this side, you will notice that we have bench seating so we can sit, have breakfast, or whatever we want here at the counter. And then behind me is our living space, if you follow me in. And this space is where we will spend our time if we are um, sitting and reading, listening to music, watching television, whatever. And, of course, this is where the dogs spend all their time with us. So, with our dogs walking around here with us, sitting on, in this case, the chair, but usually the couch with us, we decided that this was a great place to put the doggy door. My advice to you is to make sure your doggy door is in your living area, is in the space where you spend the majority of your time at home. Dogs can't really be trusted to 
use the doggy door without any supervision whatsoever. They need to be watched to make sure everything is uh, on the up and up, make sure they don't get into any trouble. What we have done is we chose an inconspicuous but very accessible area right behind our television. And this is where the doggy door comes out on the outside. Some people wonder why when the dogs are supposed to have the freedom to come and go as they please, uh, the doggy door has to be located in an area where you are spending most of your time. And the answer is very simple. If they can go out into the yard on their own, then obviously they could get into trouble in the yard on their own if they're not supervised. Things like eating things that are poisonous, meeting up with a raccoon, or a snake, or a possum. All of those things, by the way, have happened to my dogs over the years. And we were always here to make sure that they did not get themselves hurt from those circumstances. There are certain musts that you have to take into account if you're going to have a doggy door. The first, obviously, is that if the dogs are going to have free access to your property, then that property has to be secured. You'll notice that we have a very secure privacy fence that surrounds our yard. If you look carefully, you'll notice that at the base of the fence, we have buried landscaping timbers. They're like four by four lumber that will prevent the dogs from even digging underneath the bottom of the fence. Here, Apple is showing you that on the other side of the property, we have the same thing. We have those timbers buried. And with Apple's help, you have to make sure that all the corners are plugged up right here where our fence post is several inches from the building on the adjacent property. We've put in this uh, lattice securely fastened so that they can't squeeze through. The second must-have is a way to close off your doggy door. It's not so much to keep critters from outside from coming in because we've never had that situation happen, but if you go out or you're taking a shower and you're not able to watch the dogs or any situation like that, you don't want the dogs to be able to go out without your knowing and without your being able to supervise. This particular doggy door has a slide that fits right in there, locks in place, and now they can't go in or out. I've seen some other very clever ideas for closing off doggy doors. This one is a variation on the very popular barn door theme, and I don't know of any dogs that can roll those barn doors back. And here's another very clever idea, very similar to mine. It's got double flaps, uh, and, but besides the slide closure, the owner is in the process of building a door. Uh, the hinges and everything are complete, it just needs a latch, and when the dogs want to go out, just a matter of opening the door, and out they go. The third must is that you get the proper sized doggy door. You need to know how tall your dog is, not to the top of their head, because they just naturally put their heads down when they go through a doggy door, but the height at what's called the withers. Oh, she doesn't like the ruler. The withers is the shoulder area up here. Um, Cavaliers generally go about 12 inches at the withers. The height of the doggy door has to match or exceed that height. And if Apple would get out of the way, you could see that this particular doggy door, well, I guess you can't see, but it's about 12 and a half inches high. And you have to make sure that the bottom of the doggy door is sufficiently close to the ground so that taking your dog's legs into account they can easily step over it. There are a few other things that are kind of desirable but maybe not absolutely necessary. We find that it's very very handy to have the double flaps because this doggy door is open for their access all during the day and in the colder weather, we like to be able to not feel the cold air coming in. And it, it happens to be January right now, and I'm putting my hand around it, and I feel very, very little cold air around that. 
We also found it handy for the wet weather to have a mat right in front of the door. It helps to dry their paws off when they come in. Of course, if you have a mat, you will probably have to do the same thing we did. The uh, tape holding that on there shows you yet another use for duct tape. Everybody thought they knew all of them. One more little extra that we have actually uh, liked very much because we are in an area of the country where we can, although this year we're not, get um, some snow. And sometimes that snow can be six inches, a foot, sometimes more. Uh, and if it piles up against the outside of the doggy door, makes it very difficult for the dogs to come in and out. So, um, got an idea from somebody who posted it online for a uh, planter type of a thing. You'll notice it's open back here, so I can just push it right up against the doggy door opening. And there's an opening here, and the dogs are trained to go through the doggy door and this opening apple. So you see they have no trouble going through that opening. This prevents the snow from piling up against the doggy door. It also prevents the dogs from getting wet if they poke their head out and decide, nah, I'm not going out. Um, and the bonus is with this particular design, there's a little planter on top. And as a matter of fact, wow, must be a warm winter because the sage that we had growing in here during the summer is still alive. If you know a good recipe that uses sage, maybe I'll pick the rest of these leaves and use them. So I hope you found that information useful. Uh, of course, dogs have to be trained to use a doggy door, but that's the subject of another video. So for now, Apple, no, Bootsy, somebody come up. Ah, Apple's up here. And I hope I'm not squishing her to death, but there's Boo.